finally time, time to put this turbo on. So first thing I wanna do is uh, remove the intake and the harness for the coil packs. Intake is out. What I like to do next is uh, go ahead and remove, I put the harnesses and this rail, this uh, coil pack rail and this whole harness. You wanna go ahead and keep an eye and make sure you, uh, you uh, mark this so you know accordingly to put it back. I go ahead and disconnect this from the intake. Disconnect this, that way when you're leaning over the body or the engine, you don't break this. Disconnect this so you can move the whole harness over. This will be next. Okay, up next, uh, let's remove the heat shield. Uh, three of the coil packs are out. I'm gonna pull out three of these. I can pull the entire turbo, just remove these three. Maybe that one, the intake is out. This will be the next thing to come out. Uh, first this, then this, these guys, three of these, maybe that one. Okay, so a tip I found with uh, removing the heat shield, the bolts, I use some automotive uh, like putty. It's a black sticky thing that I shove inside the bolt when I put it in and remove it. And every time you use this tool, um, this is a hex, extension hex. Um, the bolt just sticks right to the head. What I found with the heat shield is I only put, I only use these two top bolts. I don't do the other ones um, just because they're a pain in the butt to get. Yeah, I get no rattle, have no issues with it. So, get three of these bad boys out, taped off. Always like to block off, make sure nothing goes in. There's a little sensor. That normally goes right here. This guy. Um, pull that out, block it off. Make sure you number uh, accordingly. Make sure everything goes back where you got it from. Next tip. I don't know if a lot of people do this or not, but I found the easiest way to pull the turbo out once downpipe is disconnected is uh, there's a little C-clip here. Pull the C-clip off. These two 10 mils right here, pull the wastegate out, or the actuator, pull the actuator out, and uh, it makes getting this turbo out of this little area much, much easier. So I got 80% of what I need unhooked from the top. All right, up next is take off boost pipe, hose, drain, the uh, oil pan, Already pulled up the uh, secondary O2, tucked it up in there. Then I have to remove my my midsection. This is where my cat would go. Relieve the stress on the downpipe, move it out the way so I can yank the turbo out the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drain the oil pan. All right, next up is to remove this bolt for the uh, turbo inlet. Polished work I did on the, this turbo. What really helps is to have a 10 mil to grind it down on the top. Bottom. It's, it's a little ugly, but it freaking works. Alright, turbo inlet is out. What you want to do is go ahead, pause out before you forget anything. Swap the OEM ring or OEM turbo size ring for the. Uh, TTE uh, 700, which is a 62.8. This turbo did measure out at 63 mil, so we're one millimeter off, but I butted up and then everything was fine. Go ahead and swap those out. Make sure it's nice and seated. And that's done for when it's time to put the turbo back together in the car. Uh, another tip. For those that don't want to buy new oil lines and coolant lines, Dave from Equilibrium Tuning uh, did the research on this. Uh, Harbor Freight sells Viton O-rings. It's the A10, uh, A110. So shout out to Dave for that helpful tip. Again, Turbo Inlet is out. There's that 11 blade. OEM plus turbo that I did up. 
while you're here, go ahead, disconnect this bracket, this whole thing, as we will be taking the downpipe off and letting this hang up. Another thing, uh, got the downpipe off, use a zip tie, secure it over here somewhere, just to hold it off to the side. But while you're here, go ahead and loosen that bolt. And that's for the uh, coolant. Pretty sure that's the feed line. But that helps loosen the coolant line. Okay, at this point, you're gonna remove the uh, oil drain. I'm gonna feed and this coolant hose up here. I have a little funnel in place because this makes a lot of mess. Um, some people, Go from here. I just did some action from the box, put a little o ring on. Call it a day. Well, my little funnel trick worked. So, next up, move the uh, intake manifold bolts. Alright, once you have turbo disconnected, put it on its back, unbolt this coolant. Uh, line and uh, pull turbo out. Okay, so turbo is off. Um, we got here my OEM Plus, I guess, hybrid. Uh, here we have the TPC 700. Basically, you just want to swap all the lines, coolant, oil onto this turbo, put it back in the car. All right, turbo is back on. Make sure you get these, I guess, manifold holding brackets. I don't know what the hell these are called. But make sure those are back on. Put the nose back on. All the lines are back on. Make sure you secure this back. Turbo is all set up, ready to go. So turbo is in, no issues. Another little helpful tip I've done, um, remove this coolant return from the heater core. Um, just remove that out of the way, put it to the side here and it makes getting the turbo out much easier. And with that, the uh, turbo's on. There it is, TPC 700, now installed. You can see here all the lines are back in, the moorings. Next to uh, just button everything back up. So now we're at the part where we just button everything back up. O2 sensor is back in, downpipe is on, actuator is back on. I'm gonna go ahead and put back on the boost pipe hoses. Secure your downpipe, brackets, everything back in. Exhaust is fully back in. Check all your lines. Yeah, and just put everything back on in reverse. At this point, everything is back on. Uh, replenish the coolant, put oil in, prime the turbo, and uh, yeah, go ahead and flash it. As you can see here, we're just about done with the install. At this point, we want to go ahead and flash to uh, stage three file. And shortly after this, we'll be doing the uh, DSG, DSG stage three file. Judy is officially stage three.